All right, welcome to the OKD uh, Working Group Docs subgroup, and we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to try something different. Instead of doing introductions, I uh, would encourage folks to look at the meeting notes, um, and uh, there you will see the people who have attended the meeting and their affiliation, and for any new folks that are here, um, we'll give you a chance to introduce yourself uh, if there's anyone new. Nope, no one new here. So let's jump right uh, into the crux of the biscuit. Uh, current projects, the guide transition, uh, what's the status? Uh, so I fixed up the PR that I had there. I took out the references to OpenShift and changed them to OKD and also put a note in the readme about how to add more guides. I think like we're at MVP status for this thing. Like if we were ready to merge it before, like it's probably enough of a baseline that we could merge it now and at least people will know how to add more things. And, you know, I think it's it's probably tuned up as much as we want for just an initial outlook. And you know what I did today? Today I broke uh, GitHub. Um, I'm, I'm blaming all of GitHub going to, I couldn't add an issue on something today and it, apparently the, the web hooks are down. So um, I will merge it. it. Okay. I'll, I'll merge it. Uh, I think you can still merge. I just, for some reason, there's certain little things that, that aren't working like add an issue. Um, so so I, will, I will merge it after this call as soon as it comes back to life um, and, cool. and send out a little note about it. Thanks. Whatever it is, it's intermittent because I was having issues as well. Um, and like on my third try, it went through. So yeah, yeah. I just like claiming yeah. to have broken GitHub. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let my team my team members who are having problems. I'm gonna let them know. Like, come talk to you, Diane. Oh yeah, I, I know how to break. <laughs> I know how to break everything. So it's a useful skill. Mm -hmm. There you go. Putting it back together, not so much. Breaking, yes. Anyways. So for the charter update, uh, I started to make my first uh, round of uh, edits to the charter. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that in the charter, it actually says that there will be seven days for voting on issues and things like that. We've done none of that stuff in terms of process. How do folks feel about that? Should the charter be changed? Or is it just that we've not made any fundamental changes that require a vote what are what are folks thinking about that well i have an opinion about that i think there's some clarification that should go on about what kinds of issues we would vote on because things like adding the guides or changing the okd.io website don't really require any kind of major voting just consensus um in my humble opinion um, but if and when we wanted to say fork OKD or ARM, like scenario, something out there, right? Or to make sure that it worked well on, you know, some other cloud platform. Um, and that I think would then then be required. So like if it was a code base change, and, and I don't know what you call that level distinction there, but that's where I think the vote would have to come because we, we have, we have con conversations where we're like, yeah, it's not doing this and we need it to support that. And, you know, and, you know, we've heard, uh, I don't want to call Neil out, but I will. Neil Gompa often says things like, you know, well, Fedora is going this way and you're going that way. So I think um, some clarifying, and I don't know what off the top of my head, I can't think of a suggestion, but something that is documentation changes, um, marketing or brand awareness changes, those kinds of things don't require just consensus and informing the group and things that were, um, yeah, consensus is good. Um, and, and, and other things like a major fork or, um, yeah. So technical and process changes would probably require a vote. Does that seem that sounds well, like I, around there? I also think it's a community maturity issue. Um, most of the people that are active and want, would want to have a say turn up to the meetings. I don't think, from my understanding, that we have a large population of interested users that aren't really, aren't really being active in the meetings. So I, I would see a statement like that is more applicable where you have a much larger community and it's impractical for everybody to join into meetings and, and, and yeah. contribute to meetings because it's it's too big. 
It's so one, of think... the one of the reasons I ask for attendance at all the meetings and people put it in is because when we get to that maturity level is that attendance at a set number of meetings and participation is what gets might might eventually get you voting rights when we go to a model that is voting on like widget changes on the website kind of thing. But um, I, I think right now if we did it, we, we decided and I'm going to use forking for arm as my theoretical thing. If we made a move to do something like that to create an OKD light or arm or whatever we needed to do. Um, trust me, that entire working group of mailing list would wake up really quickly and want to say in it. So, um, and we would have a very interesting first meeting or second meeting after we put it out there um, as an issue, I think. Um, it always surprises me who's, who's actually paying attention. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, I think, but for the small, but it is, it's totally a maturity. We haven't hit the t tipping point. And we also haven't requested any major changes to the code base. And I think the other thing is then we need a process on how how we announce a vote and how we get votes, people's votes in. Is putting it in the meeting in the HackMD, is that good enough? Or do we need a more formal process of these are the areas that we're requesting people to vote on? So I think- so I think the charter, oh, go ahead. I was, uh, but just to say it, it is in the charter that we posted on the, the Google group mailing list. So, yeah. but is that good enough would be a question, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there is a, a process that I like, um, and it's like what the CNCF TOC uses when they're calling for a vote. They use the mailing list and they link to an issue um, for commentary. So there's a there's a nice little standard, and I'm, maybe we can steal something from the TOC's governance. Um, it seems to work good and it captures the commentary and keeps it to be a um, semi-rational. Um, and civil discussion. So, uh, and, and it's trackable, this history. So by using the issues list, um, as well as the mailing list, it's very public. And that's what Fedora Core West Group does as well, so yeah. yeah. I, we could steal from them. I'm happy to help you steal. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll give a stab at creating some clarification on the different types. So by the next docs meeting, I'll have something and folks can take a look at it in terms of like delineations of what is votable versus what is just non-votable, like words that accurately describe it. Um, something like process, technical, uh, and then the other thing being like non-votable would be like cosmetic or documentation or something like that, I guess. I don't know. Something along those lines. Um, uh, okay, so updates to the OKD banner. So I made a change to the banner per our discussion from two weeks ago and what came out of the last main group meeting last week, which is, I, um, and this is just in the repo, it hasn't been built. Diane approved the merge, but it hasn't actually been built into the website yet. But dropping the recipes, because the recipes were, I mean, it looks kind of, cheesy and it's it, because there's only two recipes there that have been there for like a year and then uh you know and plus recipes and guides seem to be conflicting you know what i mean like because people can do guides for things that are recipes right same ends um and then community goes directly to uh the discussion the okd repo discussions. So let me pull up that, uh, let's see, GitHub, pull up. Now just, Jamie, I'll just note that that guides entry will go away when my PR is merged. It'll all be just one installation page. So we won't have kind of a doubling of that information in the menu right. bar at least. Right. All right, I'm going over there now to see if I can merge it so we can. Pull requests. Just while we're waiting, Diane, there is another thing that has to happen in parallel with that is we need to update the Slack because you added the direction to go to the mailing list, the Google group for support uh, at the top of the Slack channels. So we, okay. we, need to, we need to point that to the discussion groups as well now. Okay. Um, 
Let me put that in the notes so that we have that as a thing to do. Um, this is a uh, change Google group uh, text. And okay, I'm merging you, El Maiko. Let's see if this actually works. It'll take a few minutes. Right. Few minutes. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. I'm just I'm just wondering if there's a bug here. Okay. And I think there. I th yeah, I think there is a bug. I just need to. I need to push one more update. Okay. I will not squash and merge then. I love squashing and merging. Other people's stuff when it doesn't break the internet. Um. So, what else do we need to do to help with that delineation of resources? There was some discussion during the main meeting of this. Brian, you had some ideas as well. What What are actionable things that we can assign to folks to to do the separation more clearly? I actually think it's it's more to do with documentation. So when people arrive at the at the community, they've got a landing site. And there's a clear, um, Vadim was very clear, we didn't use the word support. So if you want to connect with other community members to help, to ask for help resolving issues, um, go here. And we should have an, an etiquette guide, I think, where we just lay out how you ask for help. So the information you should include, so like what platform you're on. If you're following a set of instructions, put the link there. Um, any error messages, how to get the must, um, the, the, the the help bundle, the log bundle together. We, we should just put little things like that um, in, but that's very, very much about community member to community member to resolve issues. And then we should have another group if you want to become involved, whether we call it the working, in the working group or the steering committee or however you want to word it, we have a separate section and then it talks about um, the process of how we meet, where the meet, minute meetings are, how you can raise a question, how we track issues and work in progress. So it's very clear, this is where community members ask for help. This is where community members come who want to contribute. And it, it, it's very clearly documented. And it means that if somebody wants to join in, they don't feel the, am I doing this in the right place? Am, am I doing this right? Because that was my first, the first time you put something somewhere, it's like, I'm just trying to work out what everyone else is doing and hopefully doing the right thing without getting the hate mail from communities as you often do if you've got it wrong. So it, it, it's getting that. So I noticed that links can be put in the left side of the GitHub discussion sections. So if we if we go to, to share, the discussions, which is... Show your yeah, screen yeah, yeah. if you don't mind and, and show us what you're looking at. I will. Let me let me turn off notifications so that you don't see things like the baby is awake and things like that. Hold on one second. Is the baby is one now, we are assuming, because on the gazebo. Yes, the baby turned one a week and a half ago. Yes. Yeah. Yay. And uh, he is awesome. Okay, so sharing my screen. Okay, so if we look... Here, down here, apparently you can add links down there because it looks like uh, Vadim added okd.io. Would it be good to have a link here to how to ask questions? Or I th can you can you um, pin discussion items? I don't know if those can be pinned or not by the repo owners. Oh, here's what's, what's contributing go to. Oh, okay, here we go. So we could have whoever has right access over this repo, uh, Vadim or whoever, put a how to ask questions under helpful resources. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because right now we're that. linking, we're going to change things so that community goes, or I, I think, we're going to change things so that community goes to this discussions page. And then folks could have links down here. Um, and then when they go to new discussion, there could be under helpful resources like how to ask questions or something like that. Again, what's the use of the various classifications within the discussion? Is you can sort of classify what, what are you asking? Is it a general? Is it an idea? Is it a question? Is it a 
go and tell or so again we can we can help people sort of be more direct in terms of as you say this is how you ask a question yeah and isn't there a uh isn't there like default for each category can't you do like a uh can't you modify this to actually have a template i believe you can you can um Right. So why don't we come up with templates for each of those categories that fill it in? And so for Q&A, for example, when folks select that, the text would be something like, here's the best way to ask a question. Or for a ideas, here's the best way to, you know, that's a, Brian, does that sort of address what where you're headed? Um, Having yeah. Having auto-filled, like here? Yeah, if, if it works, um, I, I, I'm not that, that familiar with discussions. I know it's beta. I haven't really got that down that, that deep with them yet. So, um, yeah, that would work. But also, I think back on OKD.io, just have a page where we just sort of lay it out. So if people are being sort of antisocial, we've got somewhere to post them to where we sort of say, these are the rules. Please follow them. Sure. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, it's back I to what we were talking about a month ago when when we were saying where do we point, where do we sort of post the sort of the guidelines. It, it's, it's it's those guidelines, yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's um, something that the CNCF is doing now. I noticed on all of their streams, uh, uh, meetings and thereby streamed meetings, they're actually talking about at the very beginning their um, code of conduct. And yeah. saying, please don't post anything in the chats that violates code of conduct, et cetera. Yeah. And we have, and, and this, and I would say this is one thing that we have a failing at Red Hat with our projects is we don't have a uni, unified code of conduct template um, that we can use on projects. I haven't seen one, El Mico, recently. And when the last time I asked legal for something, I got some pushback of um, on, on that because one of the issues we have is like, if you put something like that in place is what I was heard, um, and I'll, I'll go back to the, the well again, you need to have a process for dealing with it and people willing to deal with, you know, the, you know, reaching out and talking to people and, and all of that. And I don't think we have, and I'll, I'll ask Deb Bryant and the OSPO team again, what the, and that was about a year or a year and a half ago that I asked. Now, would I, that be some? Would the Diane? Would that be something the chairs would do? Would Would it be part of the? Well, the, it's, the chairs. It's one of those thing? weird, weird edge cases um, because OKD is a Red Hat pro hosted project. Um, oh yeah, right. And not a CNCF project like Kubernetes or something like that. Um, I normally what I do, especially when I host events that are um, co-located with CNCF, I just put in a link that we follow the code of conduct for CNCF because we're co-located with their events. So that covers my events pretty much all the time um, because then, because I'm on their premise um, and using their facilities and stuff. So yeah, it's it's something, um, Mike, that um, that we need, to, we need to figure out. It may, in the year and a half since the last time I belly ached about it, maybe they've got something. Um, figured out that we can use. And I, I'll have to take a look at, at Fedora Core OS team is usually up to snuff on all of those things. So um, let me take a look at that. Um, and Mike, maybe I'll, I'll rope you into that too as the other red hatter on this call um, to see if we can find a good example of an existing red hat sponsored project. Because if you look at the bottom of the OKD page, it's got a little bit of a footer around red hat. So it's, yeah. Welcome to my world, Brian. Um, yeah, this, a little bit of inside baseball here. It's like, yeah, when you look at the Red Hat open source communities, like in a lot of cases, we are participating in communities that are either have their own foundation or they have their own community infrastructure. And OKD just happens to be one of the projects that we host. So, yeah, I mean, I totally echo everything Diane's saying. It's it's a little bit of a weird place inside Red Hat. Yeah, and I think even Fedora Core OS, that group comes under the Fedora umbrella, which solved this problem for themselves a long time ago. Um, right. <laughs> um, and we've never hit the tipping point of enough ma mass or 
um, to warrant going full fedora on everybody, though I'm I'm about ready to do so. Um, Watch out. I that's an interesting that's, that's an interesting notion, Diane, especially when you think about the release and CI mechanics that we've been talking about in the OKD community. It's like in some ways that would be freed up by if OKD became a completely community owned project, you know, then it's like it starts to become a much different story about like where do we do release mechanics, where do we do CI and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, trust me, I've been thinking about it a lot, like because and, and I and Jamie and I were chatting earlier. I just ran into some folks from Brazil who are hosting OKD at um, Sao Paulo University, and they have a beautiful cloud that they use. Uh, the UI and, and the inter interactions are it's just amazing. And I would love to see a hosted OKD somewhere, um, even if it was a test environment for us to use and, and as a playground. Um, but that might be my fantasy. First. I know. Have you been talking with Marcel at all? So, sorry to take this in a completely different direction, but like I've had some discussions internally recently with like Marcel Hild and Emilian Machi about like the Operate First effort and how we can reach out to the OKD community as having a public cloud that we could do that kind of work on. So I, I think there's a lot of talk happening about this. Yeah, and, and we have, and the, and the other reason I think we have a big planning meeting coming up for the, um, with under Stephanie Chiras's group that I've been bringing, I'm bringing it up again, um, that, you know, it is, if they want us to do the testing of the edge cases for um, cloud deployments, and which is one of, you know, the value propositions for having an open source thing is that they get all this feedback from things that we can't resource the hosting for, then we need some resources to do the testing. Um, we can't, so anyways, I digress. But just to say, um, the code of conduct thing has always been one of those things that's um, we we need to we need to I'll I'll, I'll hit them up again, and um, we'll see what 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 we can do with that. It's the same um, you know the same issue with getting the we'll we'll get to it later. But the um, inclusive language update, um, I'll reach out to the the powers that be, which are my. Will and Jerry, who are my webmasters for OKD.io, and, and figure out what the impact is to get that structure. And they will do it. Will is great. Jerry's just been on vacation. Brian, just so you know, in the Czech Republic, they get more vacation time than we do in North America. All right. So let's um, move on now to. Uh, Anything else that we need to do? So Diane's going to look into working group guidelines and conflict resolution. Uh, anything else that we can do to for towards the separation of uh, the the working group and users? Anything else? All right. Well, let's let's leave it where it is because things might become a little bit clearer once um, El Mico uh, gets that last bug fixed and that's merged in and the web, new website stuff is um, rolled out and then we can look at the front page and the various other pages and Brian it, you have a lot of input um, and uh, I want to make sure that we go through that list again and make sure we've covered everything um, in the near future. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is go through the, the README and then it, um, so, and this sort of factors into the install thing. A lot of people have commented that the README seems to be like every single possible idea about OKD and it's really problematic. Do folks share that? I have that opinion. Brian, I know you voiced some concern about it. Anyone else have a sense uh, about the README being overloaded a little bit? I, I guess the other thing is, what is the README for and what is OKD.io for? Because we have content in the repo and we've got content on OKD.io and there's some overlap and there's some unique content in both. And yeah, and some of that like, is, it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah and it, it, it is just a little bit like, because I mean, you've got a guide section in there and we're going to put a guide section on OKD.io. Um, there's information in here about doing install. There's an install section on the 
Oh, I'm getting started section on OKD.io. So there just seems to be a lot of overlap, and um, I, I just think some clarity: what should be in here versus what should be on OKD.io, and let's let's get some some sort of uniformity yeah. and some. So this sort of let me clarity. I can give some history on the guides part. What happened is is the guides got created here, then uh, they got cloned by me for in preparation for an event. Then they got cloned by Mike to incorporate into the OKD.io website. The guides will eventually go away because all of that now has been superseded by what is in Mike's repo. Yeah, so the, the provenance this, is even a little sketchier than that because we started off, some of the guides started off as a, an, an effort we were doing on OCP to document like what deployed platforms look like. So there's like kind of like a, a double history on some of these things. And I think what Jamie's saying about the guides going forward is kind of where we want to go, I guess. So OKD.io will have the guides. Um, so this will be gone. Uh, troubleshooting was the idea that we would show folks um, how to read log bundles and do other things, and Vadim contributed that, and he's also going to, I think, add some other things that we talked about. Um, so if we look at this, there's the explanation, then there's the working group stuff, then there's getting started. Should How should we do this so that it links into... Um, the install stuff. Should there just be a link to here's the install stuff on OKD.io, or how do we how do we separate this out so that it's not all in the README and that we're not maintaining two sets of documentation or three? I was going to say, should this not just be a go to OKD.io README, and then everything else is in in the documentation site, or is this going to be more documentation for the working group? Do we do it that way? So this becomes the, the, the repo is more about how you compile OKD or how you compile the installer and put that sort of stuff in here and put the end user community on OKD.io. I, I just think that the, there needs to be, if I'm looking for X, I go here. If I'm looking for Y, I go here. It's not, if I'm looking for X, it could be here, 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 or here. Because that's and where you know it's in it. And you know what's really going to blow your mind, Brian, is there's actually a community repo. I just put it. I know, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're all over the place. So, yeah. so should yeah. OKDIO be the main single shopping point? I, I, I mean, I think we need to change the underlying technology so that it becomes easy to add things there. Yep. And, and then that should become our single shopping point, and working group members should be encouraged to contribute and add stuff there. So that becomes the one point. Anything you want, you should start by pointing them at okd.io, and then that should give them all the information and all links off to other places. So that's yeah, the one I, place. I think that, I think that makes people's life a lot easier if there's a single place to point them and yeah. say, okay, you can get to everywhere else from here. Yeah. yeah and, this, should be our community and this place point. is actually organized and understandable and you can, you know, if you need to troubleshoot, there's a place to, you know, go on that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then that, that can point you off to other places. So are we suggesting but, then, yeah, I agree, Bruce. Should, are we suggesting then that right here where it's, where the getting started starts, that we actually just cut it and have like, like, okay, we just have this paragraph. And then it just says for, Details about installation and contributing and blah 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 and the working group go to okd.io and just the all of this gets subsumed into the pages that we're creating off of okd.io and just over time move this over to okd.io pages like over yeah. the next couple months. Yeah, that would that, be my recommendation. Okay, so that's Brian and I. That's I'm voting with Brian on that. Anyone else straw poll vote? Think, think about, uh, what do you think? I think that makes sense, this? yeah. Are there any downsides to this? I know there are some people that 
they just work off of repos and they're you know they're the hardcore repo folks right and that's how they i mean don't forget okd.io is a repo in itself and that's what i say if we can change the technology so it's just markdown documentation in that repo it's effectively exactly what you've got here right but it's a single place single source i, I think that would be yeah, much I mean, better for... yeah Go much ahead, much better if it was yeah if we switch the technology and it was more community updates driven as opposed to diane and yaml um and you know, occasionally a, a community member who hacks through it and tells me that everything's out of date. Um, yeah, I, I would much, I, if we can get the resources and people's brain trust working on moving it over to, as Brian suggests, um, I liked what you did earlier, the demo that you, you know, you did. I am totally game for that. And then all I gotta do is get the, um, the web folks at Red Hat to repoint okd.io to that place and everything, all the traffic will redirect. Um, and that's much better, much healthier on everybody. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, like, like oh. all, the in, all the instructions on this, like, in this readme about, like, how to manipulate images and how to extract things and do installation, like, I don't think we want any of that here. We want to, we want people going to docs.okd.io if they're going to, like, if you're going to do an installation, go to the official docs. Don't, like, you know, like what's here, I have a feeling people are coming here and trying to do this, like, you know, I saw some command up there for how to extract the tools from a release image and whatnot. And it's like, I just, I feel like this is totally the wrong place to have people doing that stuff. I mean, at this point, you know, back then it made sense, but now it's, it makes less sense. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like we have a game plan then. And then the question is just, um, uh, Brian, do you have your, the, your little demo up in front, or can you pull it up uh, to share with us? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go back to the discussions, the link's in there. Just, just yeah. I can walk you through. Before and we do that, to... I'd like oh. to circle back. Um, I put a link in the chat to the Ansible Group's um, Code of Conduct, which um, to me work, reads really nicely. Um, and I would be happy to lift and shift that over to um, somewhere. And, 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 Brian, and um, Michael Burke is, is on here. Is that something we can slide in, like if I make an edited version of that for us into the, um, to docs, um, as the Ansible folks have it? Into the official docs? Yeah, or just the OKD version, but can we add a page? I can certainly ask. That, yeah, if you could take a look at that. I don't see why not. Yeah, because what my my whole thing was, I, I mean, ask forgiveness later. Um, if someone else at Red Hat on another Red Hat project has gotten a code of conduct um, reviewed by legal, um, then and into their docs, then it would just all always live there, and we can point to that from wherever, from OKD.io, from in GitHub in the in the contributing documentation, um, and if it if legal deem that we needed to change it, we could just change it as part of the docs itself. I think Ansible probably has already gone through this once or twice. Just to salt there. So Michael, if you, do you need me to make an issue um, so that we follow up on it or can you take that on? I would take it on. Drink more Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Diane? Mm -hmm. uh, I had a quick look at that, and it looks pretty good. Uh, the only thing that stood out for me is the word offensive, uh, because these days people get offended by anything and everything, and it's very hard to adjudicate. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, the uh, you know, so uh, and I and then I guess then the secondary issue would be okay. So who decides? Yeah, well, I think I think that's that. Therein lies all of the conversations that I've had with Red Hat Legal, um, and yeah, I don't have an answer for that, um, as, as the rest of the world has. But I do think we need a starting point um, to do yeah. that, so, and then we can. Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine for that. We probably want to re review it in the group. 
and I guess if it has to be with legal, then you know, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that let's let's see if we can if Michael if you can figure out a, a way to get work that into the docs dot okd dot io um, thing it, it won't go into the OpenShift docs but we ought to be able to create a new page in our own docs and um, if that happens then then we'll just go back and then we'll review it as a community. All right, so Brian, back to you. Thank you for letting me interrupt there. No worries. Okay, so um, this is actually a site that's based on MKDocs, which is a static site generator um, based of Markdown, which uses the Python standard Markdown library. Um, so what I've done is I've just taken some of the content that's on there um, and just played with it. Um, for the front page, I've more or less copied exactly what's on the current site, but you'll notice the header and the footer is different. Um, unfortunately, it, there is some clash of CSS because um, the MK Docs CSS and the Bootstrap CSS, the, the front page, they use some of the same um, some, of, some of the same attributes, so um, it's not perfect. But what MK Docs does is it does give you the ability to to customize things. So this is just a demonstration of how you could customize a page if you wanted it to look different. Um, but what you get along the top is you get your navigation. And again, you've got a lot of choice here. We can actually have drop down menus here. If you just say go to the, I think, blog or community, you just go to one of those. Or go to, go to community. Yeah, so you'll see that we've got a further sub menu now that pops up on the left, so I can actually go into different sections within community. That could be a drop down under community, or I could move the top menu totally to the left. And then if you go on to, say, getting started, I think it's that, that section should work. Um, go to CRC. Then what you get on the le on the right is then a table of contents. So if I've got subheadings, I get an in-page table of content, and this is all just generated from the markdown. So if I put like level two and level three headings within the content, they'll appear in the in document. So if you've got a big a big page, you can actually navigate, and they're all linkable. So you can actually copy the link to a section. Um, the other thing you've got is you've got a search bar um, with just off the if, um, there, and that's the type. So if you type something like vSphere, so you'll see it's actually pulling up immediately the pages that have got vSphere on. Um, so it's it's a searchable um, content, and again, this is all just generated by the markdown. Um, and, and and I think something like this is more what the community it, it's more useful just having that sort of search feature, having the menus, um, both the table of content but also the in-page menus. It just makes things a little bit easier. And then if you actually go into the Git repo, so if you just click the Git repo link at the top right, that'll take you directly to the Git repo that this is based on. Um, so you can see that it's all based on GitHub Actions. So in the github.github folder, um, if you push to the main branch, um, you've got an action here that will actually build and republish to GitHub Pages. This is hosted on GitHub Pages. So this will automatically build. Um, along with the build, it does a spell check and a link checker. So if you've got um, broken spelling or broken links in there, it won't publish it. it the GitHub action will fail, um, but that'll go there. And then if you look at any of the pages, you'll see that they're all just pure markdown. Um, so in the doc section is where all the content is. Um, so there, you, you, you've got the, the pure markdown. If you go into the blog section, um, that, that shows you one of the, yeah, go into the, yeah. So if you just look at raw there, you'll see that this has got one of the extensions. It just uses the table, and you've got just the, the table as, as pure markdown, just using the. Um, you've also see at the top there, we've actually added some spelling where there's some words that weren't in the standard dictionary. 
you can just put a comment in to, to actually add words that aren't in the standard dictionary. So um, other than that, it's, it's sort of fairly standard markdown. Um, it does, we do have some extensions. So um, let me just find one. Um, Yeah, if you go into the community page, just the one up below there, um, you'll see that there, you've got that little to do. And if you go back onto the website, you'll see that that comes up as sort of like a little um, header section where you, 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 you've got a, um, yeah, you've got that to do section. So, so that's a way of doing like notes or warnings or errors or to do or information um, just with three exclamation points. Um, if you want to, we can put tabs in there as well. Um, I haven't put any on the website, but three equal sign gives you a tab and you can actually have tab sections. So if you want to do different instructions for Windows or Mac or Linux, you can actually just put them in separate tabs. So anybody can get up to speed as long as you know standard markdown, anyone can get up to speed and create content very, very easily. Whether we want to put a pipeline in and build it within a Red Hat sort of infrastructure, or whether we just want to leave it to GitHub um, actions and pages, I guess we've got to change the, um, the footer because it says powered by Red Hat OpenShift Online. If it's all by GitHub actions and pages, we probably need to take, take that off the footer. Um, and what I also did in the discussion item, I did sort of raise a lot of issues in terms of the styling, because we can style this any way we want in terms of what, how do we want to style it? What should the front page be? What color schemes do we want? I just picked the colors from the current top header section on the current site, but we may not want those colors. Um, so that there's a whole, and actually, I actually put it within the site, didn't I? Yeah, if you go to the community page, the contributor, and then the OKDIO review, yeah, this is the content. I actually put it on the site. So just little things about the project landing page, the actual styling we want. And then obviously, we've got to think about how, how we want to organize it, what should the top level menus be? And how, how do you want the content to look and where do we want to go from it? And again, this shows then you've got the high level navigation for community on the left and then the table of content for this page on the right. So I think this is a good technology. I've been using it for a few years now in, in a couple of projects. Um, I know there's somebody on the Knative project. They have a similar problem where their current technology, you need sort of, a master's degree to actually understand how to write a simple page. So they are looking at the same technology for Knative. Um, there's a couple of projects in IBM that I've put onto this. And it just seems a reasonable, a reasonably stable, easy to use technology. So the only question I have is, is um, GitHub has GitHub pages. Um, yep which is even simpler. Um, That's what's hosting this. This is hosted on GitHub pages. This is just, this is this, is it the same thing as GitHub pages or is it slightly? It is. No, this advanced? is GitHub pages. Okay, so that's. So yeah, yeah. Diane, what you may be thinking about is the previous incarnation of GitHub pages that was built on a technology called Jekyll, but GitHub has moved away from that in favor of these more generic rendering pipelines. So you can do things like use what is this MK Docs you were saying, uh, Brian? Yeah. Okay. Then, then I'm like totally down with it. Um, so I mean, all, all we really need to do is add a C name directive, and whoever owns the OKD.io would point it to the GitHub page, and then we put a C name tag within the repo, um, and then you're done. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm game to try and move our OK. The, and when, you know, to work with you, this this group of people to get that, all the stuff over there. Um, and yeah, the I mean, framework, and when you're ready, just, you know, we'll repoint it. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean there, there are quite a lot of questions about styling, because I say I just did this very quickly within yeah. sort of a couple of hours. So the front page needs to change quite quite drastically, I think. It needs to be simplified and made yeah. easier to, to navigate. Um, there's a lot of sort of bootstrap in there that you notice that when you move off the page, there's a little bit of inconsistency in the top header. Um, if you go to a different section, it's sort of because of the bootstrap, mkdoc.css conflicts, there's a little bit um, of inconsistency there. But um, And then obviously, is there anything else you want on the footer? Um, if we go on GitHub pages, we probably need to take that that one that central link out. And and so and this will come out of left field. But um, Bruce and Jamie, are there any college university students that might want to take this on um, for like extra credit or swag um, over the summer to get this done? Is there? I mean, we all check into up. that. I. I think one of the things in pulling someone in is that they, because they're not familiar with the history and sort of the discussions, there might be some hand holding at the beginning to get them sort of aware of where we want to go and whatnot, particularly because theoretically we'll be editing and cleaning things up as we move it over, right? That's a process of, you know, cleaning up the pages and, and jettisoning some things and adding other things. Um, I can ask around for sure. Yeah, and there are lots. I wouldn't of want to wait for that to come about. Though. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of you know. Yeah, I know all of us have workloads. Um, mostly, what I usually do and stuff is lift and shift as is, um, which is not quite what I hear everybody wanting to do. Um, it's like to make sure there's a home for everything that exists right now on OKD.io, and then cut over, and then keep clean clean up from there. So you know. We don't lose anything. But yeah, I think that's a good plan. Actually, is you know, don't try and do everything at once. You know, make it perfect and move things over, and, and then uh, you know, you're not even sure what you lost in the process. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the easy way to do is, I mean, I'm happy you can use this repo, or we just set up another project in the OpenShift, like a, maybe a beta site. We get it working, and when we're happy, it's live, and then we can just switch it over, and, and we can just do the push into the the OKD.io site. So it's probably easier as just having a, a working beta that we can build on, let people contribute to, um, mm -hmm. without necessarily may, maybe having to do the full pull pull request as a, as sort of official as we do, just a bit bit of a sort of looser project to move it quickly. Yeah, I know. Um, I'd be, I'd be totally right, down. If you want to just fork this, I'm happy. If they want, if you want to spend the time, I can go over how it's all, all the config files. It's fairly simple. I mean, I think I put the link to the MK Docs. Um, so I guess the question now is, who has actual? Uh, so Diane, you have actual control over OKD.io. I do. The only thing that I, I don't have control over is redirecting the C name. Um, that one okay. I have. Will Gordon is my, um, and Jerry Fala, who's on vacation. Um, and you can't add anyone to that, right? Anyone from the community. It has to be only Red no. Hat people? Yeah, there's a, I don't okay. think I can. I, I will double check with there, but it, Probably we, not. No, we, we added Joseph. Joseph's got rights. Oh, yeah, that's right. Joseph has rights. We can add people to that. Um, well, why I, not? Okay, well then why not add Brian? Okay. Uh, and then Brian can create a folder within the repo that is the content yeah. for the new site, and then folks can just chip away at it. And Brian, what I'll do is I'll create a I'll create a different branch. I'll I'll create a beta branch. There you go. Okay. And, and and then we can put all the new content in the beta branch. Perfect. Uh, and Brian, can you just do me a huge favor and type in the chat your um, GitHub ID um, or your, the link to your GitHub ID? You're actually seeing it as the top. It's BNS. <laughs> uh, okay, BNS. B I W -N, N E S. All right, cool. Let me just ask.
Uh, so, yeah. We've got well, we've got seven minutes. I do want to get through everything else. So let's let's get up to that point of getting that. Um, Diane, give Brian access. Brian, go mm -hmm. ahead, create the branch, and then we'll take it from there uh, in communication offline. I do want to get in the meeting to the. We have like three yep. more things to get through. So, yep. um, inclusive language update. Uh, I have that. a quick one on that, actually. Um, well, Brian, go ahead and give us an update as to where you are. I'll throw this. Um, I mean, nothing's really changed since last time. I did the all the scans and I I created the pull request with um, all of the issues that come out. I mean, um, most of them. Were, were were just in in the sort of comments of code. There weren't too many issues on on the site. Um, so yeah, the the main one obviously is the branch name master. Yep. Going to main, and then there was just a couple of other other typos. That, um, but I'm guessing if we're going to change the technology, we can fix that as we migrate the technology. So. Here's a quick question that sort of ties into this. The community repo, what, are we going to use that for the working group stuff? Is that, or what, Diane, what do you want to do with the community repo? And that actually does have a master branch still, which yeah, actually you could change yourself because you have the ability yep. to do that. I get that. Um, so what do I want to do? We're no longer using the agenda that's there. Um, for, for meetings, so um, I, I don't have a real strong opinion about what we do with that. I think um, there should be, because it, it exists there, there should be a, a landing page of some ilk there that gets people to um, the OKD working group and, and otherwise, and, but um, I don't have a strong opinion, to be quite uh, honest. Is, is that just for OKD or is that a more a general catch-all for other community projects as well? It's a catch-all for everything to do with OpenShift. So that's that's why we um, have this separate OKD.io repo for things that we need to do, because then we don't have to ask permission. So do we then want to put, because that was one of the issues is because I was doing the agenda and I wanted to actually create the agenda without having to do pull requests and stuff, I went to HackMD. Do we want to use part of OKD.io as the working group? like? Meeting notes and membership and we should shares and all that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, we we should. Is 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 there any issue with a separate folder, Brian, being non website stuff or or things that get rendered differently or maybe don't get rendered? No, I mean if you look at the Git repo, there's a docs folder. Everything in the docs folder. Is taken as being content for the site. Everything outside the docs folder isn't content perfect. for the site. Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, I'll take that on as moving the stuff from community over to OKD.io. Uh, anything else on the inclusive language front? The other one that we've got to do is obviously the main OKD repo. We haven't looked at that yet. Does Vadim? I don't even think Vadim has the ability to change. Yeah, that's that gonna doesn't... come. Um, that's gonna come with OpenShift doing their update. No, when that that group does that, that should is there. Sorry, um, let's see which. Let's. Sorry, guys, I was trying to do something else to get Brian in something here, but um, I'm not on the page with you right now. Um. So which repo is this? I'm sorry, I was outside no, of this. It's 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 fine. So the the OKD code repo that falls under Red Hat, and I don't think Vadim actually has the ability to change branches. Does he have no, the ability that, to change branch names? No. That's about his pay grade, even. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll wait for that one. Uh, Michael, you had volunteered to do a docs process uh, documents, like basically outlining the, a document that outlines the process for identifying bugs in documents and stuff. 
Yes, I got a start on that the other day. Unfortunately, I put it in a Google Doc that I think I can only share with Red Hat folks. Well, when you get a chance, maybe at the next meeting, if you could just let us see sort of where you're at with yeah. that. The idea being that we want to direct people to something so we don't have to keep repeating ourselves. Like, go to this page to learn how to submit a issue on OKD documentation. And yes. uh, then uh, the last item on our agenda in the last minute that we have is Brian and I will work with an, to create an outline for Vadim to create a build guide. Uh, and the reason being that since Brian and I are slightly familiar with it, but not completely, and we have questions, asking questions is a great way to get someone to write a good doc because they're not writing it from what they know, they're writing it from people who don't know questions from people who don't know. So Brian and I, Brian will uh, team up and, and do that uh, and make some progress on that. And, and I think the other thing is, is, so not to overload the Dean, if we do that as a sort of community yeah. call, we can actually write, based on that that sort of transcript, we can then write the con the documentation. So we don't put the the work on the Dean to actually write the end documentation. If we get the questions answered, we can then write the documentation and get Vadim to sort of just review it to make sure it's correct, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Does anyone have anything else uh, before we close the meeting? Uh, I, got, I got something, Yeah, real Sorry. quick. Uh, oh, hold on, okay. Uh, who said, who spoke first? I didn't catch it. Yes. Okay, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, I can go. Uh, sorry, uh, I uh, last week I actually uh, uh, start uh, seeing the uh, the Oracle has a cloud apparently I didn't know. Uh, so uh, is OpenShift or OKD gonna get into that or not? Uh, it's not. I mean, if you're talking about UPI installations, you know, you you can install it on whatever kind of like bare metal infrastructure you want to. But if you're talking about like cloud integration with Oracle Cloud, I don't think it's coming anytime soon. I haven't, it's, it's not slated on our next few releases. And, and when I say that, I mean like there wouldn't, there's no machine API provider for Oracle Cloud. There's no uh, cloud controller managers for Oracle Cloud. So like Kubernetes slash OpenShift would run on Oracle Cloud if you treat it like a bare metal type deployment, but you're not going to get cloud integration through OKD. So you're not going to have, you know, the components I was talking about. Okay, cool. Uh, I actually asked that because uh, uh, they've got apparently ARM-based processors and they actually have a lot of it. I don't know how. Uh, so that would be a good... Uh, Playground testing for deployments and stuff. And there is a problem with it. Uh, they don't give you access to the machine directly. So I don't know for UPI installation, uh, what can I do that uh, attach the ignition file to the ISO or uh, and they don't well, get let's, ISO, by the way. Yeah, let's talk about that actually in the main meeting because there will be more engineers on in the main meeting. To talk about that, so we'll talk about that next Tuesday in the in the main meeting with the larger group because Vadim will be there, Christian will be there, and they'll be able to chime in on some of these things, I'm sure. Okay, cool. And Brian, we're adding you now to have access to the OKD.io site, so um, should it should ripple out in a, a little while. I didn't. Have and can that you do the thing. same for me, uh, yeah, so that I can do the agenda and stuff in there? Yeah, and your your Jamie. Type in if you could just type in your yeah. Your, I'll just um, do it. It's just my full name actually. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and then Michael, I think you had something else. Was it you who had something? Uh, I had a question just on um, yeah. the document I'm working on the file issues. Do we want those issues created against the OpenShift repo or the OKD repo? Do we? Uh, well, it's, we it's, that. it's it's against the documentation, which is uh, you know OpenShift in the OpenShift repo, 
and it's the ones that you'll end up tagging. So okay. that would be the OpenShift repo, yeah. Yeah, it is in right. the documentation, so it's what the OpenShift Makes CS. Sense. Right, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's what All I thought. Right. I just want to make sure. Yep. I've seen him in both okay. places. I think we're good. We're four minutes over, but we got a huge amount of work done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for hosting and doing this. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thanks all.